Hello, welcome to night four of the Synergy N7 build video series. Um, last we left off, I had gotten the main gear in and the clutch stack set up. Um, I actually did a couple of things off camera before starting tonight. Um, I have decided not to do a complete electronics setup and head setup video for this helicopter. I have done that before already with the um, Icon. I even did a Nitro Gov setup for an Icon video. Um, if everything goes to plan right now, uh, YouTube should be displaying a link to those two videos. Um, if you want to see how the head setup is done on a Synergy helicopter, um, please check out the two videos I've linked. Uh, the second video is the Nitro Governor setup um, process for the Icon Governor. Um, I'm, it's just gonna, it, there's really no reason to do it twice. The head is so similar, the process is exactly the same. Um, if you want to know how I did it, just take a peek at that video. Uh, a couple things I did off camera before starting tonight. Uh, I went ahead and mounted my elevator servo. Before I could do that, and this is a tip for you, this elevator servo mounts in from the back. And, it's, and as you can probably see, the horn is really close to the back of this cyclic servo. I strongly suggest you power up your fly bar list and center at least this servo, if not all three, and put the horn on before you mount the servo. Um, you're not going to be able to get to that grub screw holding the servo horn on um, once you have the elevator, elevator servo mounted in the helicopter. So just a quick tip, I powered everything up on the bench, um, bound up my icon, did some preliminary setups there, centered the elevator servo and put the horn on. Um, before mounting it to the helicopter. I also went ahead and I talked about it before, nitro helicopters. Um, I'm not normally a huge fan of wire loom, but since nitro helicopters vibrate, you definitely want to protect the wires. As you can see here, I went ahead and loomed all three of the cyclic wires. Um, and then I went ahead and zip tied them down loosely. These wires are still, don't, they're not, I'm not pulling on the casings of the servos. I'm not putting stress on the wire. I just uh, put the loom on there to protect it so I could run the zip ties through the front here without uh, the uh, vibrations chafing the wire. So that's just a good tip for you. Um, probably not going to loom the servos in the nose because all those wires, wires aren't going to have to be routed to this carbon fiber. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and mount my uh, throttle rudder and throttle servos. Those go up here in the nose. Um, those servos are held into the frame with these little aluminum triangles. There are, it's a triangle because it takes three screws. You've got uh, one screw that actually holds the aluminum to the carbon fiber. Then you've got that provides the threads for the two screws holding the servos. And there are two of those for each servo. They actually go, let me see if I can get this on the camera a little bit. I've put some of them in already. They go inside the frame. Right here is the one is the the one I've mounted for the throttle servo. Here are the two that I've already mounted for the rudder servo. That's going to allow you to surface mount the servos in the front, and the threads are already there. It's a pretty simple process. Um, I strongly suggest you use Loctite on the screws holding the little pieces of aluminum in, and then as well uh, use Loctite on the screws holding the servos themselves. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Mount the rest of the electronics, put the gyro tray on. The gyro tray goes right here. It's four screws. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to have all the servos in it, the gyro tray on, and the gyro mounted. Um, show you what that all looks like. All right, guys. Uh, preliminary electronic work is done. All the cycle servos are in. Well, that's, that's not new, but the servos are ho centered. Horns are on. Tail is centered. Horn is on. Um, couple of quick notes. The included carbon fiber um, swash arms, excuse me, uh, cy cyclic servo arms are designed to bolt right to the standard small Fataba wheel. Um, the RGX servos have a Fataba spline so that's, that makes these perfect. Um, if you want to run an alternative arm, uh, I've had great success with the Dupro Super Strength um, plastic arms. They have a 19.5 millimeter ball spacing which is great for the geometry. Um, I've used those on JR servos as well as um, high-tech servos. Those, those work very well. And then the um, Mikado uh, carbon hybrid arms offer a 20 millimeter spacing which is which works very well for the, for the 
um, geometry as well. I like that we're using the provided carbon arms with the Fataba wheels because the carbon is 2mm carbon is very very strong but this servo wheel is designed to strip at the spline so if you have a bad accident, a bad crash this servo wheel is a sacrificial part. They're cheap Servo City sells them for a penny, for a dollar a piece. They're not expensive at all. Uh, most people get two or three with their servos. If you ever buy a Fataba servo, they, they give you plenty. Uh, I happen to have a bunch laying around, so I, I like to use them even with the RGX. Um, I don't like using metal servos, uh, servo arms, though. Problem with metal servo arm is if you do go in, there's nothing to break. The metal is going to bend probably, but it's also going to transfer that crash into your servo gears and even with metal or titanium gears a hard enough crash is going to strip them or at least damage them and they'll be notchy and, and uh, not smooth so I uh, strongly suggest using the carbon arms with the Fataba wheel if possible or using a plastic or carbon composite arm like the Mikado uh, just so you have a sacrificial part the other thing I put in real quick and didn't bother putting on the video because it's pretty easy the uh, linkage piece you saw me uh, take out this is pretty straightforward. Make sure you remember to lock tight the balls on that. It bolts here on the side of the frame uh, with the two provided uh, three millimeter bolts. Uh, piece of cake, you've got uh, the outside is swash ball up, the inside is, swash, is um, uh, link ball down. Uh, that's just the, the junction point for your linkage for the tail. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, and I again I apologize, um, see the link for the video if you want to see the head setup. I'm going to stop and I'm going to actually get out my computer. You see I already have it out here, uh, trusty uh, Microsoft Surface. Uh, and I am going to actually um, do the head setup. Now I'm not going to um, film that. Again, I, I, you see my other video that if, where I did on the E5 if you want to see how an icon setup goes. Um, I will stop periodically once I get the swash on and get the head on uh, so you can see the progress, but I'm not going to take you through the, swash, the icon setup at this time. Um, again, with the, with the Icon Nitro Gov, I've done a video on that. You'll see that link. Uh, when we come back, um, I'll probably have the swash on, talk about the links to the swash arms. Um, but I hope to get the electronics set up tonight. Um, probably, hopefully even get it sitting on the skids so that tomorrow we can build the boom, set the tail, and be ready to fly this puppy. So a uh, lot's going to happen before the video comes back. Uh, when I come back, we're going to be... Uh, a lot closer to me electronically set. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, it's been about an hour, hour and a half since I stopped recording. Um, <clears throat> what you can see here is the throttle servo is on. Endpoints are our endpoints for the governor are calibrated. Uh, I want to start here, is I want to point out something. You want to make this is something that's very simple, but a lot of people get it wrong. The geometry of your throttle linkage is important. Um, on the N7, since the um, throttle servo is at an angle, you want to make sure to adjust your the horn on your throttle bowl so that it is square, perpendicular, excuse me, parallel to the horn on the throttle servo. Uh, what I did was I measured out on this horn uh, and found the closest ball hole I had on this horn was the very last point. That way you're going to get as close to it accurate as possible. For every little bit the servo moves, the throttle bowl moves as well. As you can see, I'm using a lot of throw on that servo to move the throttle bowl. That's building in a lot of resolution for the governor. Um, the governor is going to like that. It's going to be able to do more minute adjustments of the throttle um, to adjust to the head. So giving that good resolution is very important. Uh, a one-to-one -one travel whenever possible is good. On the N7, uh, probably going to vary a little bit depending upon your carburetor, but on mine, the ball at the swat at the um, carburetor was on the outside, and then back here on the linkage, due to the thickness of these servos, the ball ends up on the back side of the horn. Um, again, Bodo sizer, so size all the links. Uh, same is true on the head, swash swash links and pitch links. Um, these swash links ended up exactly 20 millimeters on this exposed gap. That's right at per the spec of the book. Sorry. Um, the swash links ended up right at 20 millimeters on this exposed gap, which is per the spec on the book. My pitch links to get my head to zero, the book says 26 and a half. 
I ended up right at 26 on, on these to get this wash. The head at zero with the level swash. Uh, full travel, the heads together, everything's working nice. Again, Bodo sizer. I sized all the links on these. You'll notice these move real easy. There's no binding on the head, but there's no play either. Um, 90 minutes well spent. I got the head set up, it's smooth. My, I'm running 13 degrees of cyclic pitch, excuse me, collective pitch, 10 degrees of baseline cyclic pitch. The uh, Icon uses agility and roll race to kind of over and under drive that, but my baseline is 10 degrees on the cyclic. Um, governor, like I said, endpoints are set. I have not programmed the radio for the actual um, governor um, gains yet, but uh, again, I'm not going to go through that on the video. You can see the previous video. Pretty much, guys, the main body of this helicopter is complete. The rudder servo is on and centered. Um, I now need to epoxy on the ends of this rod so I can get my linkage together for the for the rudder. Um, the again, the rudder servo is also at an angle. So you want to make sure you square the horn to the linkage so that when this is centered, this linkage is centered, it's going to give you proper throws. Uh, that way when this is centered, this is centered, therefore your um, tail control rod is steering its travel and then you can use the, the links to square up the, the turnbuckle on the tail. Um, I am going to go ahead and uh, stop with the actual helicopter assembly and um, pull out the skids and uh, get the skids put together. So hopefully before we um, call it quits tonight, this guy will be up on his feet. Okay, next up tonight, we're going to go ahead and put the control rod ends on both the throttle, uh, excuse me, the tail linkage for the front and the long tail control rod that goes back to the tail boom. Um, for these, I like to use a nice um, slow cure epoxy, two-part epoxy. Um, you do not want to use CA on this. It's not going to hold long term. Um, the Synergy kits do come with some nice uh, uh, CNC machine aluminum um, control rod ends. These are nice because they actually go over top of the carbon fiber, capturing the carbon fiber. Gives you a nice inch long, at least an inch, piece of, carb of um, material for the epoxy to bond to, as well as by capturing the carbon rod, it's not going to allow the rod to splinter and um, break out. Uh, the rods that go down, the threaded rod going down inside the carbon fiber um, had, had a tendency of splitting out the rod if you weren't careful and could fail in flight. So these give you a nice alternative to that. You do have four of these control rod ends, two for the front linkage and two for the tail control rod. I'm going to grab an epoxy cup and uh, mix up my epoxy. And uh, when I come back, I'm going to show you a trick I picked up from Tony Whiteside on using a piece of duct tape to hold the control rods in place while they cure. All right, I saved the last one of these torque, these control rod ends to show you on video. What I'm doing is I just take uh, an old fly bar I cut down, save the fly bars, give them a purpose, I guess, and I just push some epoxy up inside that control rod end. Okay. Then I take the end of my carbon fiber. I scuff the end of these up a little bit with some sandpaper. Just take the gloss off the carbon fiber a little bit. Gives the um, epoxy something to bond to. I kind of wet the end of that as well. Now I'm pushing that guy on there. Then I'll just take my finger and smooth out the, the excess. It's a nice clean joint. Now the reason I told you about the duct tape is if you'll notice since the other end of this is already done this has got an airtight seal and the air is kind of pushing that end off the pressure in there. So what you do is you take some duct tape And you use that duct tape to hold, oops, I got duct tape with a mind of its own tonight. Use the duct tape, push it down on there, holding the rod end on, fold it over. Duct tape is real nice to do that with. 
to hold the rod in in place because it will come off real easy and not leave. Um, it's not going to give you hard times. I've tried using packing tape. Packing tape sometimes just tears, doesn't come off real clean. I've never had a problem getting the uh, duct tape off clean. So now I've got all four ends, two of my torque of my tail control rod, and both ends of my uh, front linkage, epoxy and curing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. You're probably asking why I don't do the boom supports at the same time. Frankly, epoxy is cheap, so I'll let that. I try not to use waste any, but I'm not worried about using that little bit of epoxy that was left. Um, I prefer to epoxy um, the boom support ends on the boom supports as I'm mounting them on the helicopter. That gives me two things. That does two things for me. One. Um, it allows me to um, get the right length and um, make sure I'm holding the torque tube, the uh, boom support end all the way on the rod. Also, it keeps them square. Um, if, the, if the boom support end isn't square, when you tighten it up, you could be um, stressing the carbon fiber needlessly. So I'll show you that when it comes time. So I'm just going to set these off to the side. The other nice thing about using the tape, the, the, car, the um, epoxy, uh, well, this will pull right off the epoxy pretty easy if you cleaned up all the excess, so don't worry about that. I'm going to set those over to the side. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and pull my parts for my boom struts, for my, excuse me, my landing gear out. And uh, we're going to wrap up tonight by getting this guy sitting on, our, on his feet. Okay, guys. Uh, last segment for tonight, we're going to get the uh, landing gear put together. A couple things I want to talk about. In the packaging with the, with the landing skids, there are a couple of things. First of all, the skid twos themselves are in a separate package, a uh, two per package. Those are going to be, we talked about that in the unboxing video. In the skids package, though, are a couple of different things. One, you have the four screws, metric cap screws, that actually go through the skids, through the bottom plate, into the skid mounts. So those are in that bag. So there's all four of those. As well as you have these, and I'm going to zoom in so hopefully you can see them a little better. Inside the package, you have these um, landing skid nuts. Now, uh, some manufacturers use uh, set screws to hold the skid tubes into the struts. And if you would rather use a set screw, a 4mm set screw will go right into there and work just fine. I, I like Matt's use of the, the bolts and the nuts. Um, does two things. Gives me a joint I can lock tight. Loctite, a set screw into a plastic um, housing doesn't always work. CA can get brittle and back out. This gives me a metal cap screw into, a, into an aluminum nut. Loctite's going to hold no problem. Um, it can be a little tricky getting the, let me zoom back out for you, getting the, the servo nuts to go all the way down inside the rod and line up with this front hole. A um, couple things I like to do is I'll push it, make it go all the way down to the very bottom. Oop, got a little slag in there. I'll make it go all the way down to the bottom and then I'll take my smallest Allen key and then just kind of work at it. until it lines up. Piece of cake. Now I can put this screw in and that will keep that nut in place. Um, for the back side rod end, the easiest thing I found is to get my old zip tie back out, push it on firmly onto the tape end of a zip tie, and then you can just push it on up in there, line up the hole, and put your screw in. It's a piece of cake. Obviously, before you put the screw in, you're going to slide the, the, the skid tubes onto the skid, pu skid stands, but uh, it's just easier to show you how I line that up uh, before I put the tube in the skid. Uh, I'm going to cut the camera, and then when I come back, I'll have the skids put together, and we'll talk about how they mounted the helicopter. All right, guys, there they are. All four skid nuts are in. Skids are ready to put on the frame. One last thing, in the package with the skids are these four white rubber skid caps. <coughs> um, I tend not to put these on, not because they're not um, useful. I mean, they, they really do complete the skid. 
I end up crashing <laughs> uh, a fair amount. Uh, I'm working on autos right now, so I'm um, popping skids and uh, taking these on and off to save these skid nuts is um, <coughs> challenging if you if you uh, see them in, CA them in like you're supposed to. So I leave them off. Um, if you if you definitely want to complete the look and, and um, put those on there, it's a piece of cake. They are provided. They just uh, might take a little minor trimming. It is a snug fit, and I would that is a place I would use CA there. Uh, in case you do ever need to get it off, you can uh, usually break the CA. Um, as I said before, these four screws go up through the bottom of the skids, up into the bottom plate of the mainframe. Uh, going to go ahead and stop the camera and get the skids mounted. Alright guys, there she is, sitting on the skids, all pretty. All four skid bolts lined up perfectly. Um, the, the skids do hold the main bottom plate on, which bottom plate holds the whole frame square and reinforces the motor mounts. So being that, that those four screws lined up and tightened up without a problem tells me that the frame is square this way and the motor mount's not putting any undue torquing force on the frames. So that's great. Uh, that just shows that the, the step I took to, square the, to make sure the frames were double square uh, paid off. All in all, um, the mainframe is basically done. We do need to plumb the motor and set up the tail linkage, but uh, I, I'm going to do the, all that um, last. Um, at this point, the cyclic, the electronics are done. The 90% of the helicopter is built. If you remember correctly, we already built the tail box, so that tail assembly is already done. Um, CA some torque tube bearings on and put the torque tube in, in the, in the uh, boom tomorrow. And this guy is going to be ready for um, some final notes. I'm going to go ahead and stop there tonight. Um, get this video posted for you guys. And um, tomorrow night we will definitely be wrapping this guy up. Thanks for following along so far.